Hello. Um, so when I thought about this year's theme, Generational Echoes, I didn't really know what I was going to talk about. So I thought about my life. Oops, I skipped, sorry. And that's me. And as many of you know, I grew up in a small residential community on Vancouver Island called Saltaire. And I am the oldest of four children. There's three girls and a boy. And I started thinking about my parents and how I was raised and now how I am as a parent. Um, my family wasn't very wealthy. My dad worked full time as a forester and my mom stayed home to look after us. Um, as a child, I had a lot of responsibilities. My mom got really sick when my brother was born. And so at seven years old, I was able to wash dishes and change cloth diapers and make bottles and give kids baths. And on Saturday mornings, I would climb up to the top counter and reach into the cupboards to get the cereal bowls to let my parents sleep in. And of course, that meant I, to, I got to watch TV a little bit longer. Although life seems sometimes unfair when you're a kid, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my parents because they did such a great job raising me. They gave me unbelievable experiences, opportunities, and supported me um, throughout my life. I have such fantastic memories um, going camping. Uh, my mom took me to all my piano lessons. We went on trips down to the States to visit relatives. And every Christmas, we'd wake up to piles of presents under the trees, and the stockings were full. I have great memories of being allowed to stay up late to watch the Olympics. Um, and we played hide and go seek in the dark when the power went out. Um, my parents seemed to excel at throwing birthday parties. And we had a lot of fun, and they made up crazy games. And we all played them. So that's me at the end, and that's <laughs> those are all my friends. Um, there's, I wish that hairstyle was back in because I would rock it. <laughs> um, <laughs> growing up, you know, things weren't always easy. There was things that I thought were unfair. Um, I thought that my parents were much more strict than everybody else. And I felt I had way more responsibilities than my friends. Uh, I had to go to church all the time and I hated church. And there was nothing against religion. It's just I hated going. It was so boring and at the end, all my parents did was talk and talk to other parents. And I know, you know, growing up with having four children and not being well all the time and having a husband that worked long hours must have been really hard for my mom, but it always seemed like I was the one getting in trouble. And even if it was my siblings that were fighting, my mom would yell, Sarah! And I'd be like, that's not even me, but I now realize that she just wanted me to solve the problem. Um, I didn't get to have my ears pierced until I was 11. I didn't get to go to Disneyland until I was 14. And when I was in high school, it seemed I had the earliest curfew of all my friends. But when I was in grade nine, we moved to Vancouver and I went to a middle school. And middle school then for my uh, time was grades eight to 10. So I went in grade nine and I moved to a school with 2000 kids in it which was really big coming from a very small town. I knew absolutely no one in the school and I hated it. I begged my dad every single day, when are we going back? When are we going back? And I missed my friends. And it was really hard to make friends because people had already made friends in the previous years. I ate lunch every day with this girl named Annie. She had just moved from China. And we didn't have a lot in common, but we shared the same homeroom, so we're like, let's not be alone, and we ate lunch together every day. I was really upset, and I would wonder why my parents would make me go to a school or be in a place I didn't want to be. But then the basketball season started, and the volleyball season started, and I joined the teams, and as it goes, you make friends, and then I got some amazing coaching, and I started practicing all the time. Um, we went to provincials. Um, I went to Florida on a school trip. This is me at the Kennedy Space Center showing off my burn. And um, I got my driver's license, started driving around. I loved my life. And this is me at my grade 10 graduation, uh, thinking that I looked like Julia Roberts, actually. 
I was so excited for grade 12. This is me and my uh, basketball friends down in Florida, and we were excited. My basketball coach asked if I would be the captain of the team. Our volleyball team was expected to win provincials, which would uh, allow us to qualify for the nationals. And we were going to a tournament down at UC Davis with 400 other volleyball teams. I was loving life. I was so excited, and I realized that I wouldn't have these opportunities had I stayed on Vancouver Island. But then, in grade, just before grade 12, my dad accepted a job back on Vancouver Island and announced, we're gonna move back to our previous town. And I was angry. I was arguing with my parents every day, and actually my best friend's parents said, um, you can come and live with us for this year. So for senior year, there it is. <laughs> it's my high school graduation photo. Um, I lived with my friend and it was everything I expected. We won provincials, went to nationals. Our basketball team came third in the province. We went down to that um, tournament in California. UC Davis came 34th out of 400. Played in tons of tournaments in the States. I won the female athlete of the year for my high school. And we, I worked for my basketball coach selling programs at concerts, so I got to see some really cool and not so cool rock bands, which was really awesome. So I went to university and I loved it. Um, at first I just went to play volleyball and then I applied for the education program and I got in. And who do you think I met? But a handsome young man <laughs> named Scott Jolly. <laughs> And actually, at the time, we were both in serious relationships with other people. Um, but eventually, we became friends, and well, you know how the rest goes. We graduated from university and went to Korea, and then we got engaged, and then we got married, and then we had McKenna. And <laughs> the nurse said McKenna was the most beautiful newborn she had ever seen. And we could not believe how much we loved this tiny, precious, human, perfect baby. And in fact, when I was pregnant with Mason, I was really worried I wouldn't love her as much because I loved McKenna so much. <laughs> and then we had Mason. <laughs> and of course, my heart was just as full. And then we had Maddox, and it was the same thing. So then, you parent. And it's funny because you start doing the same things that your parents did. I didn't make my kids go to church, but I did make them wait until the very end of the day while I still talked to teachers. Um, McKenna had to wait until she was 11 to get her ears pierced. Mason got hers pierced on the same day when she was nine because, to be honest, it was just easier. <laughs> Maddox has not asked to have his ears pierced, but you never know. My kids have chores. Um, they have responsibilities at the house. They have to help take out the garbage. They vacuum, they do dishes, they do laundry, and they have to take out the dogs. I remember McKenna coming home from school one day, really annoyed, and she said, Mom, you know, in Spanish class today, we had to list all the chores that we do in Spanish. And guess what? I'm the only kid that has chores. <laughs> and I said, well, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, sorry. So when I think about the generation gap and why parents parent the way they do and why kids think it's so unfair, I think about this. Parents love their kids so much that they would do anything for them. We push you to do better because we want you to be successful and to be honest, we love bra bragging about you to our family and friends. <laughs> we say no because we want you to be safe and we've learned some life lessons along the way that we think we can help shelter you from. So my parents are amazing with their grandkids. Um, they now have four successful adult kids. They are financially secure and now they have less worries um, because my dad is retired. It fascinates me to see my parents with my kids because they are so loving and they're so relaxed and they have basically turned their house into a fun zone for kids. So, I thank my parents, I aspire to be like them, and I hope that my children will one day thank me too, even for the chores. Thank you. <laughs>